All right, y'all, let's go over what we're working on today. So, like if you've already followed the channel, you already know that right now I'm working on storage, uh, a storage lot at my shop. So we've got all the base laid down over here. I have the back half scraped, and I still need to lay down one more pile back there of base. And then after that, we're gonna come in here with a bunch of fill to fill in all of the uh, gaps in the gravel. So. The thing is though, when you tear up a bunch of land to put down gravel, you end up with a lot of dirt. And I mean a lot of dirt. So we've got all this, I've got some over there, and I had a pile over there that I ended up moving already to the front. So that's what I'm getting at. I need to figure out what to use this pile for and I've pretty much decided what I'm gonna do. And I'll show you. So if you follow this channel, you already know that I'm in the dumpster rental business. And I just recently started getting into uh, I guess what you could call the equipment rental business, like this skidster here. That skidster I'm also using to clear this land. I use this skidster all the time for demo work that I do for people. <clears throat> I do it for my own work here, uh, maintaining some of my own properties, destroying properties, whatever you want to say. But the funny thing is, I'm finding that it's just as valuable to, when I'm not using it, rent it out and you need to do your research if you want to ever get into a business like this because insurance is a big thing contracts are a big thing but there is money in it but you do have to be willing to get past the fact which all of you always mention i can't imagine renting something out for people to destroy it my stuff at the end of the day you got to get over that because it's not your stuff it's your business that is your business people are going to destroy it people are going to break it get over it if it makes sense on paper you just got to look past it it's not your stuff it is your business. That's what you make your money with. So here's the machine. And believe it or not, one of the best things to get attention with this machine, I kid you not, is this for rent sign. That for rent sign gets me so much business because as you can see, I have all this traffic that passes my shop every day. But it is kind of tacky looking. At least I didn't write it like a, with a crayon or anything. It has a sticker, but I do want it to look more appealing and that's what we're working on today and that's what I'm gonna use that dirt for because that will no longer be my only piece of equipment very soon we will have a mini excavator I do have attachments for that equipment which is making it more and more valuable every time I'm gonna be renting it out three times this week uh, two times it'll be going out with a brush hog one time it'll be going out with a grapple bucket oh four times and then the next week I have somebody who just wants a straight bucket but what I want to do is have it perched on this dirt and that's what I'm starting to do out there, making a big old berm where you can actually drive up. I got the idea actually seeing it at another rental place, very, very, very large rental company. Uh, but I saw it and I thought that would be such a cool idea to have my skidster sitting right next to my mini excavator and then basically being right there by the highway so people can see them during the day when I'm out here and it's just their, their own advertisement. And instead of having that for rent sign on it, I'll probably have similar to my dumpsters where it says rent me or whatever on the arm of the skidster itself where maybe Kubota, the word Kubota is. So I don't know. I'm going to play with it a little bit, play it out with a design. But at the end of the day, I know that I want that thing to be my attention getter. I still have Facebook ads, Facebook uh, marketplace postings those do get attention and of course my website where people go to book dumpsters they see that there and they usually reach out as well but just driving by with all this traffic it's like its own little billboard and it gets a lot of attention and a lot of rentals every week so that's what I'm gonna work on now we're gonna make this thing look more appealing and more professional as this shop starts to grow more and more I, I want it to be more of a location for my business rather than just a location for me to stuff my stuff.
All right, so we're about halfway through uh, the pile that was in the field, actually probably a little bit more. And I mean, it's turning out better than I expected and coming together a lot faster. Um, keep in mind, this is literally just the base. We're gonna have to let this actually settle for a while and then we'll come back and we'll probably put some big chunks of rock and concrete up here so it actually holds us in place and then we'll cover it with gravel as well. But this is definitely a good start to building this berm. Um, I will definitely say, it's super sketchy when you're driving up this when it was soft. The first few times I was packing it in because I can only reach so far in there. And I was like, well, you know, if I really want this to work, I need to make sure I'm putting weight on this and packing it with the shovel and with the tracks. First few times watching the actual, like driving up on the edge when there wasn't as much room and watching the dirt slide off like that. Wow, odd timing. Uh, it was pretty sketchy, but uh, you get used to it. If it falls, it falls, we'll tip it back over. But that's pretty much it. Let's get some uh, more work done and pretty much call this a day for a while. something about the small town man everybody stops by checks in see what you're up to I don't live here either so it's always kind of funny when they do that to me but uh the cool thing is uh, I had two people stop by asking me if I'd sell dirt one dude's coming back in like 10 minutes with a trailer so I'm definitely gonna have some excess so I'm literally just gonna scoop some dirt into a trailer for him and he said he's gonna float me 50 bucks for a small trailer so that's kind of cool um, and then outside of that I had two other people stop by asking me how soon my storage lot would be ready because they have campers they want to store before winter even said they don't care if it's fenced in or has a cover before winter they just want a place to park it they want to de-winterize or they want to winterize their stuff and have a place to park it so it sounds to me like before i even need to fence this or anything all i did tell them was there would be cameras before i rented it out that way at least you know i've got proof of anything that happens but People want this space and that's awesome. This is a small town, but there's a lot of surrounding communities. So this is probably really long overdue for this area, but it's just weird. The small town mentality for sure. People stop by like literally every, I probably 30 minutes 
and interrupt what I'm doing, which I don't mind. It, it's good to look, like learn who these people are and connect with them when you're building a business. But we're just about done. I'm gonna get the last of my dirt here and then I'm gonna save some dirt for the gentleman that just came by and we're gonna call this a day probably. This is hilarious. This is the third guy that's come in for dirt. At the end of this, I'm not gonna have any dirt left for my berm. Oh well. It does look pretty good staged up there. I mean, I really do like it. Definitely can get some more height out of it, but it definitely grabs a little bit more attention. Maybe put the boom up on the arm. That way you can see it. But we can also get a sign that actually is here that says rolling observations, equipment rental or rentals or something. That way you can actually see it there. But it's coming together slowly. I like it. All right, guys, we're all done for now. Put the skidster back out for, with the uh, for rent sign on it. Berm turned out pretty nice. I mean... I really do like it. It's uh, got room for some growth. Like I said, I gave away some of the dirt, but at the end of the day, who cares? I had plenty left. I'm gonna wait until it rains a little bit before I start like actually setting the skidster on here. That way we kind of let that settle down a little bit. We'll come in with some gravel, like I said, and layer it onto the top, get some concrete or rocks on the sides there to keep it nice and sturdy but I took a little bit more time to work on the shop too or the the lot so I got all of that uh CM6 that was over there down but man we still got a lot to go we're gonna go ahead and do CM6 all the way in the back where that asphalt pad still is underneath a little bit of that dirt if you can watch one of my previous videos you'll kind of get the scoop on what's going on here with this storage lot and then this is all the base doesn't even have a CM6 left on it but Man, it'll probably be easily 300 to 500 tons of rock. At the end of the day, well worth the investment. And I mean, honestly, the Skidster is literally helping me do all of this. Building the storage lot, renting the equipment, doing uh, multiple demos and brush mowing and all kinds of stuff. This thing really opens the door to uh, multiple streams of income for sure. And that's why I'm just gonna keep uh, doubling down on it, I think. Before we leave, let's go ahead and check on the shop real quick. Oh, I left the hose out from when I cleaned the skid last. But, uh, ooh, I left my tools out too. I kind of left it in a hurry, so it's a little bit of a mess. But, hey, if anybody wants to buy a boat, please uh, let me know. It's not mine, but it is in my shop for now. And uh, it's actually my father's. Good boat, but, you know, he spent more time working on his house and doing other things that he realized he doesn't need anymore. But let's uh, show you some of the equipment we're still renting out, but uh, not much to it. This is the brush mower. Like I said, this is going out in a couple days uh, with the grapple. The guy's actually renting the skidster, the grapple, and the brush mower. So he said he's going to cut down with mature trees with a chainsaw, use this to pick them up. And then this is just to get rid of cockaburrs and just a lot of overgrown brush in a field. So, um, wow, yeah, like that will be one of my most profitable rentals, renting all three of basically what I have. The only thing that will be sitting here in the shop is the straight bucket, which I've been using today. So this guy's getting the whole package. And if you aren't subscribed to this channel, but you're watching all the time, go ahead and hit that subscribe, please, so that uh, we can keep the YouTube juice going, whatever that algorithm is that keeps our content on the top of your mind. But hope you liked today's uh, episode and like I said, drop those comments with suggestions. Tell me what I did wrong today building this or tell me what you think I should still be using this field for if I haven't already started thinking it already. So drop those comments, hit that subscribe, and I'll see you next time.